Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast, and I'm just checking in on you. You like that? That was a song ender for a, one of the shittiest songs ever yet to be written. Um, I am back in Los Angeles. I'm back in Los Angeles. You know what Los Angeles is known for? New Yorkers coming here and ordering bacon, egg, and cheeses. <laughs> hey, let me get a fucking bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah, we don't make that out here. What the fuck? That's a New Yorker's entire experience. I went out to L.A. and it wasn't New York. What the fuck? <laughs> Morons. Um... And I, I, I love New York. I'm not saying I don't. You know, I did a lot of shit. I did a lot of shit when I was in New York. I went to a museum, right? I fucking walked along the watchtower, whatever they call it, the L. Oh, I told you guys about that part already. I think I already told you about the, uh, the museum, too. Did I tell you about that? I don't fucking remember. I can't remember. Anyway, um... I had a good time doing that shit. Oh, Freckles saw a, I saw a play the other day. I mean, who am I? You know, I, I'm just I'm just a bald ginger, just walking around, not smoking cigars, not eating sugar, laying off the bread, dressed in muted colors, all the life draining out of my face. <laughs> no, I actually did really good uh, with not eating bad shit. And then I took one chance on this pizza place that I thought had closed down during COVID that was delicious. And then it reopened and it, and it wasn't as good. There's nothing worse than eating bad and it's not fucking good, you know. Um, so anyway, and then like New York right now, I'm telling you, dude, it's like all fucking. Uh, there's so many goddamn weed stores and most of them aren't legal. So if you walk in and they don't ask for your ID, that's usually, that's not a good fucking thing. So I walked in, right? I couldn't get to sleep one night. I was like, you know, and I don't smoke anymore. So I just say, fuck it. Let me just, you know, walk around the corner, you know, out the hotel, try to find someplace and get some gummies. And I show up. I should have known. I walked in. There's one guy in there. It was really sparsely furnished. Kind of like back in the day, you know, when they would be selling drugs out of the bodega, you'd come in, there would be like two boxes of cereal and a fucking cat on the shelf. And you're like, all right. And if you actually wanted to buy some food, they're looking at you, especially when you look like a fucking retired police chief like me. They would just be looking at you like, is this guy a cop? Um, the feds coming in. Um, I walk in, right? And I, I couldn't understand the guy's accent especially when he was saying like how many milligrams it was, which is the critical information. So the first one, he goes like, all right, you just got some gummies, you know? He goes, I have these that I my friend. I have the thousand milligram. I'm like thousand milligram? He's like a thousand milligram. I'm like, per gummy? He's like, yes. I'm like, what are you, are you trying to fucking kill somebody? <laughs> I still don't know if it meant there was a thousand in the bag. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I have no fucking idea, right? So then, then he goes the other one. He says 500. Then it's 100. Then it's like 50. And I'm like, all right, we're down to Joey Diaz now. I mean, I can kind of fuck with this, right? I'm like, but I can't do that. I can't do a 50. And then finally he finds his fucking bag. And it's like, go ahead, five milligram. Yeah, my friend, five milligram. I go, five milligram, five milligram, five milligram, five milligram, five milligram right? I'm all right how it is right so i fucking i whatever i gave, gave him the money for it and i go back to uh my hotel and i'm like all right this fucking guy was talking 1000 he was talking 500 there's no fucking way i'm eating more than one of these things i'm gonna eat one and see what the hell happens so i eat the thing and it literally tasted like nuclear waste with like candy and I was like, oh, my God. And I barely tasted any sort of weed or anything. So I ate this fucking thing. And I'm on the phone with my buddy, and he's, like, laughing. Because, like, 20 minutes later, I'm like, oh, shit. 
And he's like, what? I go, I can't feel my fucking nose, man. It's like, it's getting all tingly and stuff. I go, I got a feeling this wasn't just five milligrams. So he's like laughing. And it was weird. It came on like that. I felt it like in part of my forehead and then my nose. Like here comes like, you know, north of 20 milligrams, right? Which I never do stuff like I'm 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 5'10" usually just five and I don't do it that often. And I was going, Oh boy, here we go. Uh, last time I did something like this, it was when I went to the masters in like 2022 and I wasn't thinking, and I just ate like a handful of them. And I, I like wanted to, I was sitting there as Bartnick was telling stories. I was sitting on this fucking stool in this kitchen that uh, in the house we had rented. And I wanted to get up and go to bed for about two hours. And I was just like, I just didn't know how to do it. So I was just sitting there trying to ride it out. And I thought it was going to be that. And I felt it in my forehead and then in my nose. And then it went away. And I was like, oh, okay. So that was sort of the warning. The first wave hitting the beach. What's the next wave going to be like? And it never came. And I was like, oh, you fucking assholes. All right, lesson learned. I'd have to eat the whole fuck. What is it? The whole bag is five milligrams, you asshole. So I just threw the shit out. Um... So that's what I learned. But I don't like those fucking places. Like you got to go in and they ask for your ID and stuff. It's like, okay. And then they like scan it and start writing shit down. It's like, I'm not fucking, you're not taking my license, writing it down. Who the fuck are you? This isn't even legal on a federal level. I'm going to trust you. You're like half a drug dealer. I'm not giving you my fucking ID. Well, you can't come in the store. All right, fine. Whatever, I'll just go home and I'll read half a page of a book and I'll fall asleep probably faster than this shit, right? Um, and then today when I was at the uh, at the TSA, I got the clear thing, right? Scan my fucking retinas so they can make a robot out of me. And then they go, well, we need your phone number. I go, I'm not giving you my phone number. I already gave my retina. What the fuck else do I got to do here, right? And they're going, you know, it's a one-time thing. I'm like, well, obviously it's a one-time thing. You enter it in the computer and then you have it. You're going to fucking put it out there. And they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. I'm like, you're not going to do that. But these guys, these guys are. And they go, well, sir, if you're not going to do it, you got to go in the TSA line. And I go, fine. And guess what? I go in the TSA line, and it was just as fast because most people have done the other thing. So I don't know. There's, there's really like, uh, you know, it goes back. I'm right around Ronald Reagan. They started deregulating shit, and they, and they, and they sold regular people on you don't want the you don't want the government all up in your life you don't want them all up in your life telling you what to do and da, da, da. that's that's how they sold it what they really wanted to be like is we don't want these guys regulating you so we can fuck you in the ass as hard as we can and that's what they've been doing and now here we are and you have all these homeless encampments every fucking you know, city you go to, and what do they do? They always blame the standing president. It's not the standing president's fault. It's politicians over the last 40 years getting paid off to deregulate fucking everything. I just found out the other day, if you and I are standing on a street corner, okay, we both call an Uber, the same kind of Uber, and we're going to the same place. It's a different price considering what you're used to paying. So it's basically, all right, if we can fuck this guy here for another $7, we're going to do it. Used to not be able to do that. Um, And watching these corporations just buying up every other corporation and becoming like monopolies, you used to not be able to do that, and now you can't. But, you know, you don't want government all up in your life, you know, telling you what to do. Like they were going to go to some fucking guy's house in the middle of nowhere and start giving him a rough time. Uh, but you know what? We fell for it. We fell for it. Anyway, we, uh, um, I saw a, uh, I saw a play while I was back there. Old Billy White way, you know, I got to tell you right now, if all the lights were as fucking white as my fucking head, people would still call it the great white way, the great ginger way. Um, old Ginger Lane, something like that. I saw the enemy of the pe- enemy of the people. Did I already say that? I started this podcast over already because I didn't think it was fucking funny enough, so I just started it over. I, I, my brain is on a fucking loop. If I didn't mention, if I already mentioned, it, I apologize. It starred uh, Michael Imperioli, 
Perioli and uh, Jeremy Strong. It was amazing. The play was over 100 years old, and what it was about still applies today. Like if somebody told me somebody wrote that play last year, uh, other than the way they were dressed, I would have believed it. Or even then, I would have been like, all right, well, they wrote it last year and set it back in time then. So um, that was amazing to go to that. Um, and then I, we did the Patrice O'Neill comedy benefit. And right out of the gate, I got to give a, a shout out to Rich Voss who hosted it. He's hosted it every single year. The man is the glue that holds it together. And he, there's kind of this running joke every year, Rich. Lately, he just seems to be fucking people's names up. You know, last year he called Patrice's mom by the wrong name. And uh, this year he brought out Robert Powell, who's one of the best comedians I've seen come along in a long time. You got to check him out. He brought Robert Powell out. He called him Robert Palmer. <laughs> he brought in a live black comic out on stage by calling him a dead white guy's name. It was the most Rich Voss thing I had ever seen. Uh, this was the lineup. It was uh, Reggie Conquest, Bonnie McFarlane, Robert Powell, Jim Gaffigan, Michael Che, Dan Soda, uh, Cypher Sounds DJ, uh, Rich Voss hosted, Marcelo Hernandez, everybody killed everybody in their own way did their own thing and uh yeah robert powell had this great story that he told about going to a titty bar with patrice o'neill that was just we were all like oh my god i never heard this story before so it was it was awesome i was like finding like a lost you know track from a band that you loved so um and then thank you to everybody down at the stand chris italia paul all those guys for uh you know, hooking up the after party and everything. So we had a great time, uh, as always. And thank you to all of you for coming out, selling it out again. Every time you guys show up to that thing, you're basically, um, you know, you're helping us take care of Patrice's mom. It's a fantastic thing. So thank you. And then lastly, what did I do in New York? I did the God in the Dreams, old Billy Benefit. I did back-to-back -back benefits, wore the exact same thing both nights in a row, and I would have got away with it, but Jim Gaffigan was on the Garden of Dreams too. So when we were doing the little red carpet, he's like, Bill Burr wore this exact same thing last night. <laughs> he was so excited to tell everybody. That's what I love about comedians is just fucking childish Childish as hell. Um, his face lit up when he saw me wearing the same thing. It's like, oh, fantastic. An opportunity to shit on somebody while getting a laugh from others. And it worked. Everybody laughed at me. Um, but it was fine. Anyway, uh, I feel like I, I, I've, I've done this podcast over again. I don't even know if I already talked about that. Um, Anyway, the Garden of Dreams was amazing. My God, the amount of fucking people that showed up for that, um, as far as like famous people and athletes and everything, like Dwight Gooden was there, John McEnroe, Jerry Cooney, um, uh, Victor Cruz. I know I'm going to forget somebody. That's a Vern Lundquist. Oh my God, who a bunch of Rangers showed up. Mike Richter, Adam Graves. It was unreal. I, I, CC Sabathia was there. I mean, it was fucking unbelievable. Luis Guzman, all of these actors. It was, it was uh, Ben Stiller, um, who gave me a really nice intro, by the way. You know, you see a guy like that. He's like, I don't know if this guy even knows who I am. And they gave me a really fucking nice intro. And I was like, Wow. Fucking Ben Still is a good guy, man. <laughs> After Jim Gaffigan trashed me, you know, Ben Stiller lifts me up. Uh, John Stewart was there. He did a, I don't know. It was just, it was a bunch of people. And uh, so there you go. So I gave back twice this week. So now that I did that, I gave back on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now I feel like I can just be a dick for the rest of the week, you know? Oh, I also, I did the breakfast club. 
I did the Breakfast Club with Jess Hilarious, DJ Envy, Charlemagne the God. There, look at me, remembering names. I'm off Instagram. You see that? I'm off Instagram. It wasn't early onset dementia. Oh, I can't really say it's early at 55, but anyway, whatever. Um, so my brain was flying all over the place. So, um, yeah, I went on that show. I thought that they were going to come at me. They were, like, really nice. I was just sitting there going, oh, God, here we go. What corner am I going to get talked into? And uh, I didn't. They were, like, really cool, and it was fun. A lot of the stuff that they were asking me brought up memories I hadn't thought about in a long, long time. So, um, you know, thank you to them. I went out and I got drank a bunch of fucking coffee at a bunch of different places. I stayed away from the bread. And uh, I'm still fucking red. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Now now I am back. And um, <clears throat> I got some big shows coming up. I got the Hollywood Bowl. Playing the fucking Hollywood Bowl, people, for uh, the Netflix is a joke festival. I want to say that's May 3rd. And... Uh, I was talking to my agent, and he was saying it's definitely going to sell out, um, which makes me feel great. So thank you to all of you guys. There's still tickets left, but they're projecting that uh, by the date there won't be any. So if you want to go, get them now. And um, and then after that, I'll be getting real close to uh, getting ready to tape a special. And I'm fucking psyched because I have this new bit that I've been doing that turned into a chunk and then it went to this other little offshoot thing that I, I really want to flesh out. And I just think it's one of those jokes that was, or just sort of ideas or observations that was just sitting there, hanging there, you know? And nobody got to it as far as I know. Um, Cause that's what always happens. You know, you'll go see another fucking comedian. They'll just do something. You, you, when you hear it, it just, it's so perfect, it just seems almost easy. And you're like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? That was just sitting there, waiting to be said. Ah, you know, he or she got there first. What are you going to do? Um, so anyway, um, I'm back. And this is how I am when I'm back. Like, if you notice, I'm a little fucking scrambled. Notice this, like, about myself. So what I need to do is the old me... I would literally drop the bags and I would just go out and go play drums or I would get in my car and go drive somewhere. I would come, I would just immediately, you know, I would, you know, I'm wound up from just being on the road, right? Packing and unpacking and that shit. So now I've just learned like, nope, just fucking sit here, relax. I don't shut it off though until I unpack. That's an old pro move from doing the road. When you get back from the road, before you fucking collapse onto the couch or the bed, or if you get back from a trip, unpack. If you don't, that thing's going to, that luggage is going to sit there and haunt you for three to seven days. And that dirty laundry in there is just getting dirtier. <laughs> That's fucking nasty. So I get home. <clears throat> I always do my laundry too. Um, you know, unless I'm only out for a couple, two, three days. But if I'm out any longer than that, I fucking do the laundry. And uh, I hate putting dirty laundry into a fucking, into luggage and closing it up. It's just fucking gross. Um, it's one of my, uh, it's one of my non-negotiables whilst I'm out there. So, uh, oh, Jesus. What the, f I, I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. Oh, I know what I talk about. I, I, I watched that movie, The Iron Claw. On, on the flight out about the Von Erich family. Oh, my God. I don't, you know, like the level of tragedy in their family, it's like the Kennedys level. You know, the amount of, amount of like, oh, it's just fucking horrific. But I got to tell you, it's an amazing, amazing movie. Gorgeously shot. And the acting was outstanding. Um and I used to love the Von Erichs. You know, they, they didn't... Uh, I used to always watch the WWF. So I forget what, what they wrestled in. So we would never see it. And then somewhere along the line when we got cable, all of a sudden we, we got that other... Whatever, whatever they wrestled in, the one that had Ric Flair, that one with the Von Erichs was way better. 
There was something about it. It was just, I, I liked a lot of the uh, wrestlers better. And um, I loved the Von Erichs. And uh, Kerry Von Erich was my favorite. And uh, I learned something about him that was shocking in the movie that I never knew. I never knew. Uh, I mean, it's on his Wikipedia page. All right, spoiler alert. I'm going to talk about it, all right? So you got plenty of time. I'm counting down. Take out your fucking earbuds or whatever. Fucking hit fast forward. All right. So I never knew this. It was Kerry Von Eric got involved in a motorcycle accident. And he messed up his leg really bad. And he was supposed to stay off it. And he got back on it too soon. And uh, he ended up re-injuring his foot. And they had to amputate it. And I had no idea. I was like, wait a minute, that was the end of his career? And they sh showed in the movie, like he, he got a prosthetic and pushed through all of this pain and continued to wrestle. And we were all at home, had no idea that he was, uh, he was missing a foot and that he was in all of this pain. You know, he got addicted to painkillers and all of that. And then it went that sad route. But um, amazingly, amazingly uh, shot film. But Jesus Christ. Um, of course, I have eight minutes left in the movie, and uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, they used to get they they used to infuriate me, you know. But now they actually warn you; they say there's not enough time left to see the movie. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I want to watch this movie anyway. It just looks good, and uh, Zac Efron is the star of it, and the other actor, uh, spacing on his name, who stars in The Bear plays Carrie Von Eric and uh, just a fucking awesome movie. I feel like I'm doing like, uh, who's that guy? I'm so-and-so. We'll talk again. He used to be on late at night when he would talk about movies and all of that shit. Um, anyway, let me do some advertising. This podcast might be a little short this week because my brain is fucking fried. Um, all right, what am I doing here? Poli oh, Policy Genius. Policy genius, everybody. Hey, hey, you, are you set up for the future? Did you know that life insurance rates go up as you get older? Make, it, make life insurance part of your financial planning this year. Start shopping, start shopping right now with Policy Genius to find a policy to protect your fucking family. Uh, getting life insurance today means that you'll have peace of mind. So if that something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. That right there, that's the scary part of life insurance. You know, getting life insurance today means you'll have peace of mind. Here we go. So that if something were to happen to you, do you know how many people who never even cheated on their taxes <laughs> that were beneficiaries of life insurance. That sentence right there got them a life sentence. Uh, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare options from top companies and their team of licensed experts. Their, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. Policy Genius has licensed award-winning agents and technology that makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Even if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, and it may not follow you if you leave your job. Yeah, when they replace you with your 13-year-old who can now work in Arkansas for part-time work. Policy Genius, they hire all your kids and then fire you with your benefits. Policy Genius works for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over the other, so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. Save time and money and provide your family with a financial safety net using Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash Bill Burr or click the link in the description to get free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash burr. Um, all right, and with that, I think I'm going to wrap this thing up because uh, I, am, I am wiped out. And, uh, but anyway, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank all the comedians. I want to thank uh, Maureen Tarrin, 
for putting the whole thing together. Uh, everybody just working for free, man. Everybody just doing it for the for the right reasons. It's such a fun, fun show. And um, I was really blown away with, you know, all of the guys that I already knew. Like I hadn't seen Michael Che do stand up in a while. Oh my God, is that guy a beast? Fucking beast. And then seeing, you know, finally seeing Robert Powell live, who I became a fan of his right before the pandemic. And then all that bullshit happened. And then I did Old Dad's. And I sort of took my eye off the ball. But um, luckily through Instagram, came back into my life and I got him on this. And his his set was unbelievable. Bonnie McFarlane was doing all this personal stuff, talking about her and Rich's relationship. It was fantastic. And I never saw Marcelo Hernandez, who went up there and absolutely killed. Um, Reggie Conquest was another guy. I had never seen. He was one of those guys, just his vibe. You could just knew he was a comedian. So all those newer people, it was fantastic. And um, and then all the uh, the heavy hitters, Gaffigan, Voss, Dan Soder, and all of those guys being on. That was amazing. And Cypher Sound there. Just got to make sure I give everybody their props. Couldn't do it without them. So, um, oh, Billy, golf game. I got some golf coming up next month. And I might actually go out and take a lesson. So I think this is what I'm going to do with golf. I'm going to take lessons, but I'm not going to get my clubs. I'm not getting clubs. I'm not fucking buying anything other than balls, balls and tees and a big fucking sun hat like I'm going out picking blueberries. That's the only thing I'm, I'm investing in the game and, and whatever clothes I need to wear. Because uh, that last time I almost did it. I almost pulled the trigger and bought golf clubs when I walked into that fucking store and just saw all of that shit. All of that shit. Knowing 90% of it was going to get fucking thrown into a lake on a fucking golf course out of frustration because they're going to blame the equipment. Not the fact that if you consider golf a sport, can you at least go this with me? Golf is the number one sport that at, that has the least amount of athletes playing it. I mean, Rich Foss plays golf. (laughs) And he's good at it. And he's good at it. Um, That's what, that's what amazes. That's why I I, I always said I categorize it as an activity because non-athletes can get good at it. Non-athletes cannot get at, get good at other sports. You can be a non-athlete, you can get good at pool, you can get good at fucking golf. You can get good at bowling. But all the real sports, we got somebody fucking lining up across you, talking about you know, you know your mother or whatever, getting in your fucking head or throwing some fucking uh, high fastball right by your chin. I mean, those fucking, those are like, those are sports, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you don't have hand-eye coordination, you're in for a long fucking afternoon sitting on the bench because you suck. No, that's another thing why golf isn't a sport. There's not a bench. You can't pull somebody out of it. They just fucking stay out there. This guy sucks. I know. There's nothing we can do. Maybe he'll be nice and pick up his ball and walk towards ours. Um, oh, God, I love shitting on golf. I also do I, I do enjoy uh, playing it. Um even if I'm not playing well for how I usually play, I just fucking love, I just love the Nomar Garcia Para level ritual that some people have before they address the ball, only to shank it, hook it, dribble it, you know. And then they always, they always like gesture towards the ball. They put their hand out like, what the fuck happened? We even what that you happened. It's not the ball. It's not the club. It's you. You have a fucking club in your hand and you have a ball. And if you hit it right, it goes nine zillion miles. All right. If you don't, it does what it just did. All right. If you did it right, it would have gone flying. So stop fucking gesturing at the ball. Like you ever see somebody fucking cause an accident and then they fucking gesture at the other person like, what the fuck are you doing? That guy is a golfer. (laughs) All right, I made it a half an hour. All right, that's it. Um, Enjoy the music picked out by the uh, incredibly talented 
Andrew Themelis, and then we have a bonus half hour episode of a Thursday afternoon just before Friday Monday morning podcast from I don't know uh, a year gone past all right have a great weekend you cunts and I'll talk to you on Monday hey what's going on it's Bill Byrne it's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday March 28th 2016 the year of the yak Whatever the fuck it is in the Chinese New Year, I have no idea. Isn't that New Year next next uh, next month? How does that work with those people? You know, how do like I don't I don't get it. I, I just don't I don't understand why we're on standard and everybody else is on metric. Can we just pick one fucking calendar, one unit of measurement? You fucking go over to Europe, Jesus Christ, metric, and then some old guys talk. Hey, wait, fucking twenty stone, twenty stone. I mean, I guess we're still saying horsepower. Jesus fucking, well, what size stone? What are you, a fucking Freemason? Um, Is your buddy in the Illuminati? Is that where he's at? Uh, Your little secret group? You think you're going to make it? Buying up land on the aquifers? Is that what you're going to do? And then what? Huh? All the robots are going to take everything over, right? You phase everybody out, but uh, but except you. And then you you guys. You guys are going to be good. And then all the robots, for some reason, aren't going to turn. How many fucking movies do you need to watch? Before you realize that they're eventually going to turn on you. Stuck on you. You made a fucking robot. Now it's choking you off with your dick. And you deserve it. Mighty glad you stayed. There you go. That was a little Illuminati with uh, Lionel Richie. How do you like that? Um, somebody sent me this fucking video. They go, hey, you might want to watch this thing. And it was basically this person was talking about, uh, was showing how the automobile put the horse out of business, you know, which it was so funny to me. Like the horse was upset, like, oh, fuck. You mean human beings are not, aren't going to ride on my back anymore? God, what, what, now what do I got to do? I can't run free on the planes? Um, I guess the horse population dropped off, but like nobody who was, no, you know, most of them are born into, uh, I guess you really don't see horses running around, do you? Maybe out in Wyoming. Yeah. See a lot of cows at the Waffle House. I'm sorry. Well, why would you do a fat joke, Bill, this early in? Come on. You're better than that, Bill. Hang on a second. But come on, Bill. Okay, but we're going to do this a while. Can we come try to fucking have, like, just a certain standard of comedy? Do you got to go that low? You know, you got to attack the broads and fat people all at the same time that early? Hey, you know, whatever. You got to shoot your way out of a slump. It's my second attempt to get this thing going. This is one of these times I'm recording the podcast, not because I'm feeling it. It's because I have to, because I got shit to do tomorrow. So uh, I got to kind of knock this thing out on Easter. So anyways, anybody, somebody shows me this fucking thing. So the guy shows how the the car put the horse out of fucking business. And uh, yeah, like I said, like, like the horse is upset. It's like when you watch those weird commercials where like uh, the Mr. Potato Heads are sneaking off to eat potato chips. There's some sort of weird like undertones of cannibalism going on there, and it's supposed to be adorable. I don't, I don't get those commercials on any level. Um, but uh, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, so they were basically showing how computers and everything being automated is going to phase everybody out, and there's going to be this mass unemployment that is coming um like this is fucking groundbreaking thought i mean a dummy like me has been saying this for fucking ever right and he just kept going like oh so you're in this industry well you're not safe either you think you know you actually you're a computer programmer well guess what you're not safe either buddy just fucking relax and like he just kept coming with that tone and at some point i was just like well you're gonna fucking shine that light in yourself there maybe he does by the end i couldn't listen to him what about condescending douchebags who think they know everything narrating over these fucking videos? You know, with your big dude, I called it. Really? Or is technology in the future going to get rid of jobs? Yeah, I had no idea. It's only been doing that since the beginning of fucking time. And these fucking people are just forever forecasting that the sky is going to fall. This is the fucking thing. Eventually, the sky will fall. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Everybody's been trying to predict it ever since that fucking Nostradamus douchebag, all the way down to a moron like me. And the bottom line is none of us know what we're talking about. Oh, the lovely Nia. I'm busting in on your podcast. Well, get a microphone and a, and a plug. They're in, the, uh, they're in the closet. 
So the bottom line is nobody knows when all this shit's going to end. So just, just fucking go enjoy yourself. You know, I just feel like this fucking all this whole presidential election. You got you got one loon. It's in the clo- it's on the closet on the top shelf. You got one lunatic on the fucking left, another lunatic on the right, and then you got this fucking I don't know what she is in the middle. You know, she's not really in the middle. She's just more the same. You know, they're gonna they should just wheel her into the White House like fucking Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> one of those fucking masks on. You should have to watch her awful fucking mouth. You need the plug too. Oh, I got the plug over here. Let me hit pause so the listeners don't have to fucking listen to this shit. And with that, the magic of the pause button. We were able to get by all that. Don't you wish you had a pause button in life, Nia? I certainly do, Bill. When all of a sudden something bad was going on, like, you know, I was in the middle of one of my long, drawn-out stories. You could, Well, I actually want to fast-forward, wouldn't you? I felt that your listeners might need rescuing from that. <laughs> from, oh, is that what it is? <laughs> no. Let me just bring it down I here because you're breathing in. into the mic here. There we go. Yeah, don't do that. Just have it. Just hold it down a little more relaxed. You know, like you're Every sitting there with a the drink come in your hand. You're always telling me how to use the microphone. Yeah, because you don't. I'm, I'm just, all right. Well, fucking use how you want to use it then. I got my own style, Jeez. man. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you know, you sound. Sometimes you sound like a. You know, when a little kid answers the phone, wow. they just pick up the phone. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and you're like, hey, what'd you do today? Did you have a good day? And they're like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the hardest thing ever. I just was talking to my niece, and it's just like you got to like – you can't an- – ans- if you just ask them yes or no questions, mm-hmm. you got to be like, what did you do today? You can't be like, did you have fun today? Because they won't elaborate. They'll no. just go, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're like, oh, fuck, I need another question. Yeah, they're not the greatest conversationalist, but – Oh, they're they're brutal interviews. They come- <laughs> they're brutal interviews. They just they- that's you, oh, is that why child actors are so creepy? You know, like little kid because it's like you shouldn't be able, you shouldn't be this articulate. You shouldn't be able to just like elaborate in a way because you're a kid. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it's it's the combination that they talk like adults. They're making more money than you are, right? And they're wearing that little talk show suit. The whole thing, and they just be, and they just sit there, and they cross their legs like an adult does when they do panel, and they'll just be like, you know, so what was it like working on blah blah blah? And he'd be like, oh, he was great to work with. I've, I've been a huge fan of his stuff. Like, I know, it's yeah, so for the strange. last six years, my whole life, basically. I don't think they should make little kids do interviews. I feel like that's. I think it's one thing for them to do movies and stuff, but I don't think they should be doing interviews and press and stuff. I just feel like that's weird. I don't think people should talk to little kids. Period. <laughs> like no, <laughs> like seen like little heard. kids. I don't talk to little kids like little kids. No, neither do I. And I think that that is a like. I think it weirds them out after the age of four to be like, oh, look at you, and they're just looking at you like, yeah, yeah. You know, like do you remember in uh, remember in Young Frankenstein when he just goes like, it is alive. I've never seen it. It is alive. And Frankenstein's sitting there look, looking at him like, dude, what the fuck is your deal? No. Gene Wilder? No, oh, no. You never saw that movie? No. Walk This Way? You haven't touched your food? Are you quoting the movie or are you yeah. just saying words? You're quoting the movie? <laughs> Did you have a pot cookie? <laughs> no. No, like, uh, yeah. How have you never seen that movie? It's fucking hilarious. Is that the one where he's always going Frankenstein? Yeah, when Fran- are Frankenstein. Because okay, he's I remember to, those like, clips, but I don't. Wasn't there something well, called he's... Young Frankenstein with Yahoo Serious, that comedian from Australia? <laughs> what was uh, that movie? <laughs> well, God knows, I always fuck up the name. It's the one with Gene Wilder in no, it. No, I think you're right. That's that's the name of a Gene Wilder movie. But wasn't there something with Frankenstein with Yahoo Serious? Am I just? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know why there's like a about. wind tunnel where you're where you're talking. Like I, you, you know what it is? Does it sound bad? No, because this is what you do. You're up here, and then you're down here, and then you're here. You're moving it all around. So what do I do? You need a steady hand on that microphone. You, See? You don't move your hand at all. Uh, I'm I'm pretty consistent. I just I rest it like this. I rest it against my chest, my chesticles. Okay, so just like my this. male my male pecs here, my chesticles. Does it sound far away though? If I do this? Yeah, it does. How about this? That's fine. This is good. That is good. All right. That's right there. Now, just don't move and freeze for the next 50 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to leave soon. I just came in to say hi. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know if you had any questions from... Oh, that hasn't come in yet. Oh, so what are you going on about? Frankenstein? 
No, I was talking about the Illumin. This fucking video somebody told me to watch where it was just like, this guy's just saying how technology and robots are going to phase everybody out. And he just kept, you, you know, oh, you're a milkman? You think you're safe? Check out this fucking robot and everything. It's just like, yeah, well, what about condescending douchebags who narrate videos? Like, they probably already have a robot to do that, right? <laughs> Don't they? To do what? I'll tell you this. To just narrate shit. They already have the fucking robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> or even that's just a voiceover. That can somebody, fucking Can somebody woman- please make a poster? It's like a horror film. And what did you say? That weird robot lady in the elevator? I want that somebody fucking to- robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> I want somebody to do <laughs> a poster for a movie with your face looking very concerned. And there's like an elevator. No, behind she's it. depressing. She's in like every fucking <laughs> elevator, and it's like going up. And then when she says going down, she goes going down and she really like like your whole life is going in the shitter and i can't tell you how many people i've been in the elevator i go I, I, it's so fucking depressing they're like i know i hate it it's yeah, not just know. me okay you know it's all of us out there in the ramadas <laughs> you know hoping they got that little waffle flippy thing down there for the continental breakfast that's right those stale blueberry muffins those little bite-sized <laughs> ones that for some reason give Give you a, what do they call this? A little muffin top. Muffin tops. Those things are like little grenades for your gut, mm-hmm. for your belly, you know? You just pop one of those in there and you come like like Homer Simpson. Yep. Oh, you're going to do this? All right. Let's get into the, well, let's get into this part of the, oh, I thought you were giving me shit. No, no, no. I'm listening. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> just, doing, just doing that shit. <laughs> let's talk about uh, your, your little trashing that you took. You took like a oh, cellar God. level, comedy cellar level trashing today. We were out to brunch uh, with yeah. my mother-in-law, yeah. my brother-in-law, my uh-huh. sister-in-law, and yeah. you and me. And we go out to we go out to uh, lunch, and and you are the biggest sweetheart. You got you a <laughs> wonderful sense of humor. You're a cutie pie, but when you talk to the wait staff or just in general, I still don't see it. Oh, and everybody that was in agreement, you have you you put a little mustard on it. You have like a, can you get your shit together or what? Like how many times do I have to ask you the first time? Like when the lady came over <laughs> and she goes, what did she ask? You and I were sitting down while my At a mother, six top. Yeah, at a six top while my mom and my brother were outside waiting for my sister. So we went to get, get our table and she said, hi, can I get you guys some of the drink? And we both said waters. And she goes, okay, and can I get you some appetizers? And I said, we're just, we're waiting on three more. That's all I said. But you make it seem like no, no. I was like, um, excuse me. No. You had this tone of like, bitch, why would two people sit at a six top? There's obviously more people coming. You, you had a little fucking. And there were menus. And there were menus. That, see, there it is. <laughs> and there were menus. And it was totally, that's what it was. The fact that there was menus there and she didn't do the math. You just have this, well, what the fuck's wrong with you? I, but I don't think that I'm a difficult person to serve in a restaurant. Would you say that? Uh, I don't what, send things the back. Way, the way I that don't... you do it, the way that you do it, it's, it's one of those fucking zingers. It's a tone. So the person, like you said something nice, but there's a tone in there that makes the person a step and a half away, kind of cock their head like, <laughs> was she just being a fucking asshole there? Am I like... Yeah, you were accusing me of being shady. It's basically what it was. And that's not my intention. I just, you do, you do know though, I, I Not do shady. A, shady is like dishonest. You're saying that, that... No, no, shady as in I'm being shady the way Throwing I shade? Yeah, Are you like, going down? <laughs> <laughs> going down um i i just have a i definitely have a little less patience than normal perhaps at a restaurant this is good you're gradually and i it. do feel that um i don't like it when they're not on top of things that's all and i mean it wasn't just for me like my mom got her salad before she got her wine and well, the rest of us got drinks and like you know me and my brother and my sister all had mixed drinks she had wine. Like, hers should have been the first thing that came out. And then we all get our stuff, and then she gets a salad with no wine. And I said to her, and she has a wine. So that when she brought over my mom's fat salad, I just said, and she has wine. I wasn't like, my mom ordered wine, and she should have gotten that first. I don't do all that. No, you don't go to that level. Yeah, so what's the problem? No, you have a fucking tone 
mm-hmm. I can't do it. The way that you fucking do it, I just I always look at you and go, go easy, Nia. Just fucking take a little <laughs> off your fastball there. You just have this fucking dude, your brother had agreed. Your sister agreed. What did my and mother say? She pleaded the fifth. She goes, I'm not gonna get involved in this. Cause she does the same thing, to be honest. I'm not trying to throw my Oh, mom and that's under what your bus. that's what your brother said. What? Your brother goes when your mother would talk said that's where she gets it from. Well, I mean, my mom definitely has been known to complain have- about food. She bitched about the food in Italy. The, the funniest moment. thing ever. Don't keep saying, don't keep spreading you know, I that guess I'm rumor. Just, I, I guess I'm just used to a sandwich that has meat on it. More meat on it. <laughs> More meat on it. No, I mean, I think, yes. We, how hard have, did we tease her for complaining about food in Italy? We teased her a lot. But then, and then she's she a good loves sport about it. Yes, she's a good sport about it. But um, no, I mean, my mom has a tendency to be like just to the point with people like that because, you know, I'm just letting them know. Listen, this was the Sunday wait staff. This was the Easter Sunday wait staff. Like I said, you're not get, you're not getting the the cream I just de la feel creme like the itch- of wait staff on Easter Sunday. Oh, like, let's wow. be real. Wow. You're just, I mean, so you're going on. in there with that attitude. Now, this is all this type of fucking predisposed thought <sighs> and tone that guys like me, guys I'm like so, me, I'm gonna offend somebody because somebody did a shift at a, no, no, a no, restaurant. No. I'm saying on Easter Sunday, you have, and they're gonna say that I'm saying that they're not the creme de la creme. But if you had been in this restaurant, okay, so I'm not talking about you. If you had been I in had this restaurant, time. you would have seen just how it was a little off. That's all. And I wasn't like throwing a temper tantrum or being demanding. Yeah, you, you have, keep saying you I have, was demanding. Because, and I mean, I was you not have demanding. this fucking <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Every fucking place we go, when you order, you have. Really? I'm always like, easy, Nia, just easy. Just all you gotta do, just pump I the just, brakes a little. I just feel like I'm. They ask me what I want, and I just tell them what I want and what I need. And I'm. The thing is, when you order, I think you're fine. Okay. But then it's when, when everything <laughs> isn't chop chop coming your way, you have a way of like, can we get some more bread? <laughs> like, please. Like you have this, I can't, I'm, that's, that's, I lose that's my patience. too, yes. I lose my patience. So you're fucking agreeing with me. I agree that I have a low patience for service that is not of the quality that I feel that it should be. <laughs> yeah. I know. I sound, well, here's the thing. Yeah. I sound crazy. I know. And if they fuck with your food, they're going to fuck with my food too. So it's just fucking, the, the wait staff has an unbelievable amount of power that you're not really realizing. To fuck with your life. I realize that. I was a waitress, remember? I understand how it all goes down. I just... And what happened to you at that job? You got fired. And here you really? are. You're going to really oh, yeah. go there? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I got fired over some <laughs> bullshit, okay? Uh, and they could never even tell me no, why I got fired, okay? They were like, oh, you told somebody that they couldn't have iced coffee. And I said, oh, you told me that we don't serve iced tea anymore because it's the fall. And they were like, oh, but you still can have iced coffee. And I'm like, oh, I didn't fucking know that. And that was an example of one of the reasons why they fired me. Bullshit. It was over I some bullshit. You, uh, okay? I so think there was a little mustard, not... little mustard getting slung around in that place. <clears throat> you know what? You probably had the same fucking attitude, the same lack of patience with the people <laughs> ordering those fucking bar flies. <laughs> Actually, no, you did a great job. That was one of my favorite times when I was first in getting to know. Yeah, you used to work cute. at this place. It doesn't exist anymore. The Allstate Cafe on yeah. uh, the west side in New York. Like 72nd. And, and she used to work the lunchtime shift. <laughs> and I would come in as a fucking, you know, no name magoo comedian right so mm-hmm. my days are free my mm-hmm. phone's not ringing you come in every day that i was working it was so cute you come in with the new york post you come in with the paper oh, i loved it and you'd sit in the same booth and i get a burger, burger oh it's the shit and i would serve De Rosa would you. come by De Rosa would come Joe and you looked would adorable come. you looked yeah. adorable people that loved you there fun. people you, you got you got the shaft there which i just brought that up i definitely got the you. shaft there because i had friends there but restaurants are just they're weird environments. Anybody and that's the only place you ever got fired from. Weird. And I remember Never how hard you took that because every place else you've just gotten promoted, promoted, promoted. That's the oh, only place. I cried. Yeah, you cried. <laughs> so I think maybe that's why you have that fucking attitude when you go in there because what? it brings you back. And no, rather, that's ridiculous. Well, then I, maybe you're just not a nice person. I'm a nice person. <laughs> but no, I get impatient at restaurants. I will cop to that. Okay, fine. I, I cops being impatient at restaurants. 
Well, do you remember when you were a wait, wait, waitress and people were like impatient with you? How did that make you feel? It didn't make me feel good. Okay. So the next time we go out, do you think maybe... Uh, I'll just let you order for me. How about that? Make an old, nice, yeah. old school and traditional just like you like. That, well, yeah. I liked it when there was defined jobs. Defined gender roles, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well... I'll let you it, have it, this it, one. It then. made it made uh, I'm such a, a shrew to deal with when you take me out to eat. It made it a lot easier. What do you mean? The questions just came in, by the way. Okay. One of them's skin infection. <laughs> 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 what am I a doctor? Somebody um, wrote you about they got they were getting married or they're engaged and their fiance wanted to have a Little Mermaid themed wedding. Do you yeah. remember this question? Yeah. Yeah, because I got sent it to Andrew sent it to me, too, um, to comment. I mean, obviously, I'm late, but I just... First of all, I just don't think that's a real fucking question. I didn't either. Are you... Okay, good. I didn't think it was real, but it's I was so, like, if like, this is real... What 28-year-old person would really... Like, no 28-year-old woman wants to have their fiancé dress up as... Who is it supposed to be? Neptune? Um, You know... Because Good. that doesn't make any fucking sense. Because right. Neptune is her fa- would, would would be uh, the Little Mermaid's father. Yeah, I, I, it just seemed he like he would joke. be dressed up as right. Prince Eric. And the fact that you didn't know that just proves that you lied. Because a girl who's really into Little Mermaid, like I am, would know that those are the facts. So, well, maybe they're just talking about. Okay, here we go. Bizarre <laughs> thirteen most bizarre and unusual wedding themes. All right, here we go. Look, these people are dressed up like fucking monsters. All right, look at these dopes. Oh, they're both dressed like zombies. zombies. Yeah, no. This isn't really, this isn't good for the podcast because okay. people can't see what we're talking about. Yeah, well, we can comment on it. I, can you have a little faith in me? Jesus, oh. stop treating me like a waiter. <laughs> um, <laughs> having I'm your wedding at a, at a department store. These people got married at TJ Maxx. All right. No comment. No comment. Ooh, okay. Your entire party can be superheroes. All right. So here, this is getting towards uh, Little Neptune or whatever the fuck it was called. <laughs> Little Mermaid. <laughs> Little Mermaid. Okay. So one was dressed like Wonder Woman. The other one was dressed like Batman. Mm-hmm. How out of shape is the Batman? It's a loose-fitting fucking Batman suit. He looks horrible. That's some shit that you regret later. He looks like old Batman. Like, you know, when your skin loses the elasticity? Super Mario Brothers can smash it up at your weddings. That's a wedding cake, a Super Mario Brothers wedding. Just show up naked. Mm-hmm. Okay, now is this, seem, is this seeming... Uh, wow, what a bunch of fucking weirdos. <laughs> a roller coaster of a wedding. People get married on a roller coaster. Yes, I, I could see that. I Jump see off a bridge that. while you say I do. You get the metaphor, Nia? Yes, is they hitting symbolic. you over the head with you? Yes, uh, make it so somebody has in their wedding ring to boldly Star go Trek. where no man has gone before you. This is this is you, you seen the theme here. There's a yeah. Shrek wedding. Oh, really? Well, anyway, I I thought the question said that the dad get thrown into a shark cage was not the dad, but like the the groom was supposed to be dressed like Neptune, and that just would not make sense unless he was. This is all this Comic Con but... shit. All these fucking nerds. Try to find Middle Earth for the wedding of your dreams. Rocky Horror Picture Show and a zombie wedding. I mean, it's just people out there that think that that shit's cool. I still thought it was a bogus question. I have, I don't fucking know. Hmm. What, what, what do I know? Okay. okay. Um, I was going to tell the story of seeing the old guy fall off the scooter. I hope he's all right. Jesus Christ. You helped him, though. Well, what was I supposed to do? I was oh, the first person there. Billy Bird of the Rescue. Fucking guy rolling down the street, sliding on his face. Poor guy. Oh. <laughs> he was fucked up. He wasn't. He had raspberries. He knocked himself out. He came around. He was spitting out. He was pulling out little bits of teeth. <laughs> and I don't know why. It was horrifying when I saw it, but now I can't talk about it without laughing. It's just because he was on a scooter. I Basically, I was... Um, Oh, I'm not going to say all the information because, God forbid, the people that are related to him are listening. So the fucking dude was like, uh, ah, fuck it. I'll just tell the story. I didn't do anything. I just finished. 
client would just exploit his fucking tragic accident. Well, nobody knows what. It, all right, I, I had just done finished flying, right? Mm-hmm. Which everybody says is so fucking unsafe, right? Mm-hmm. Fly around and look at all this cool shit. Fly over Silver Lake to see that they took the water out of it. I didn't even realize that. And I came back. I fucking land. You know, say goodbye to everybody, and I'm driving out. You know, to the real scary thing, driving down the fucking street. And I literally pull out, I make a right turn, and I don't I don't drive more than 40 yards. And I just see this fucking guy, just this old guy takes the turn to come onto the, on the little two-lane highway that I'm on. He's on the opposite side of the road, and he, like, he went too fast. And on, like, a motorcycle, you can't just turn the front wheel. You're going to go down on a scooter, you know what I mean? You've got to kind of look your way through the turn. And lean and your moment, momentum, you know, he's supposed to look through the fucking turn. He he was going too fast and he went into the the fucking island in the middle. <laughs> Bell. He, he fucking, he jumped the fucking curb. The whole fucking scooter went up in the back. <laughs> and he high sided, right? He just gets launched off this fucking thing and he's rolling down the street like a fucking log. Why are you laughing so hard? Because people falling down is fucking hilarious. He was fine. He didn't break anything. He just knocked himself out. He's a little concussed. And then he wasn't wearing a shield. And in the end, he just sort of, he was sliding on his face. So I'm going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, as I'm watching it. And I fucking pull over. No, I made sure everybody stopped and I got out. I was like, dude, dude, all right, just stay there. You're all right. You're all right. And, um, and he was, uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he wasn't saying anything and he has no. fucking raspberry on his face his pants were torn up he literally got fucking attacked by a wild animal and he's fucking laying i feel terrible that this happened to him but it's just afterwards it's just funny and he was laying there right and like one of his legs he had like up like he was chilling and the other one was just straight out like that and he was just like uh, uh, and he was like coming around and I was like, all right, man, I called 9 you're fine, you're fine. And then this lady shows up, and she just kept going, don't move, don't move, okay? You're okay, just don't move, okay? And she kept going, okay? And it started annoying me, and I almost started laughing. Like, I want to be like, lady, like, the way you're talking is probably <laughs> <laughs> worse than what the fuck he's feeling right now. So by then, you know, like five or six people had stopped. Everybody called. So this ambulance shows up. I'm like, okay, thank God. And, he, and now he wants to get up. We just kept telling him not to get up. And um, the ambulance pulls up and he just goes, uh, he goes, is he all right? Is he all right? You're like, yeah, yeah, he, he seems to be OK. You know, we're not fucking doctors, but he seems to be OK. And he goes, all right, just tell him not to move. I already have someone on this ambulance. There's another one coming. And then he gets the ambulance and drives away. Yeah. And then we're looking down the street. and We don't see any ambulance coming. We're like, what the fuck? And um, finally, one in, uh, a cop finally came up and this guy was fucking priceless. He gets out, right? <laughs> fucking horseshoe bald guy right he's got the whole landing strip he just comes out looking like sergeant Riker from the rookies for anybody's old and he fucking just comes walking he looked like the guy from nypd blue the old guy showed his ass with the mustache mm-hmm. minus the mustache he just comes walking up and he just walks right up to the guy dennis he, franz yeah he just walks up like his toes are almost touching the guy's body and he just looks down at him and he goes you all right <laughs> <laughs> And the guy at that point is going like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And he goes, all right. All right, the ambulance is going to be coming. Like, he just, his level of just like, I, I he must see like people be on fire every day. Yeah, so this guy, exactly. He just sees a scooter and this guy fucked up. He's just like, yeah, yeah, all right. He also seemed way too old to still be in a patrol car. So I think he <laughs> fucked up somehow and got busted down. Or maybe he was on his way to some uh, senior police fucking banquet or some shit and he's just like ah, i'm driving the cruiser they know i'm a cop i have to stop so once that was fine it was funny then we're just standing there waiting for the ambulance but you know we got to get on with that day and uh me and there was this tall older black dude standing there and, this, and he's just like he's like all right man they're here and i was like yeah yeah they're here and we just pulled <laughs> we both got in our car and fucking drove away and uh, it was really, you know, it wasn't too bad. I mean, it wasn't too gory a scene. It was just a couple of raspberries and well, stuff. I'm glad he didn't have a but more it was, serious injury. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But it wasn't until I got on the highway and I started driving and I started thinking about it and I just started laughing. <laughs> I think it was just more the surprise that, yeah. it, that you saw it. But there is just something... Just watching somebody get fucked up like that. I remember the time I was in Griffith Park and that dude came down the hill in street clothes on a skateboard, 
He went down that fucking what? hill. What? Are you serious? Dude, this kid where you was... Hike, where you hike up to the observatory? Somebody was going down on yeah. a, a skateboard? Yeah. That's so I was just north of where the Greek theater was, and this guy just went, yeah, went flying by <laughs> in this thing. And I was just like, oh, my God, that guy is the shit. Like, and I'm thinking, like, well, how's he going to stop? Because this is just downhill till you get into traffic. And all of a sudden, his legs start doing that, yeah. that wobbly fucking thing. And I'm mm-hmm. like, no fucking way. And I'm telling you, this guy was going like fucking 30 <laughs> miles an hour <laughs> and then he just steps off the skateboard you always do that either one or two steps and then you're done he was going so fast he did like one step and it was like who's that guy who fucking jumped 30 feet in 1969 nobody ever broke it he fucking head first yeah! <laughs> flying it was like the greatest stunt I ever saw. And he landed too. And he started rolling. Neat. When I tell you this guy, this guy was rolling so fast, he was like a blur. He's like, he would go like, and he'd hit like his elbow, which would shoot him in the air. Like, brrr, boom, brrr, brrr. And, then, and then the best is when you're not going fast enough to keep rolling. And then you just slide in the sand like, all the way down the thing. And I was just like, and the skateboard kept going. And I was, and he was, and he just, he was just not moving. And I was going like, oh my God. And he was so, he started wiping out like 50 yards away from me. And I swear to God, it was a quarter mile walk to get where the fuck he stopped. And he was just laying in the road, not moving. Like I was like, I think this guy is fucking dead. He had, he had no helmet. He had street clothes on. He looked like he just came back from drinking. And he just, he had like this Harrison Ford, like brown leather jacket on. He just fucking launched himself. So I get up. So I, I, I'm getting close to it at this point. He's trying to sit up. He knows he's laying in the middle of the road. And I finally see his skateboard hit the curb on the other side. And bounce into a parked car. And then he like, like crawled. He tried to stand up and he couldn't put any weight on his leg. And he crawled. He crawled over and sat down. And by then I knew he was all right. So I was already starting to laugh. So I was just going like, dude, dude, doing that dude while laughing. I go, you all right? He goes, he's like, yeah, bro. What the fuck, man? I was just going. And at that point, I'm trying not to laugh. I was just like, dude, I go, that was fucking, that was fucking hardcore, man. I never seen a wipeout like that. If I was filming that fucking thing, dude, it was the most fucking, it was the greatest log roll. Whatever the fuck you call that thing. That dude was just, I never seen it. I can't believe his shoes stayed on. Like, you know, your shoes always fly off whenever you get hit real hard. Yeah. Oh my God. Tremendous. (laughs) <laughs> fucking tremendous and it's just as much as you feel for the person there's just nothing funnier than watching somebody fucking wipe out if they don't die and you don't know them right god god help me man anyways uh, let me do a little podcast oh, reading for some uh for some of the advertising oh it's advertising time it's advertising time and let then you sh- do the questions afterward yeah i can get right to those things if you know i just don't want you to start you know <laughs> talking to me in a certain way <laughs> I was going to ask you what you wanted for dinner. I'm starting to get hungry again. Um, something remotely. Oh, here we go. Oh, the advertising. Um, Woo. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. That's why I fuck around in them, because I'm not going to have people subjected to my fucking reading out loud without, you know, if it's a funny train wreck. Like the way I read is like me watching that old guy fall off the scooter. <laughs> Oh, Grandpa. Oh, did you, did, Grampy. Grampy, did you take it too fast? Hey, guess what my Boston Bruins did t- today? Did they do something that's going to put them in the running to be in the Stanley Cup Finals? Uh, the playoffs. The playoffs. playoffs. Last week, you know, we were fucking possibly could be, uh, you know, a bunch of shit had to happen. You know, basically the Rangers and the Capitals had to keep losing or whatever. And we, we could have gone past them and been in first place in the Eastern Conference. And then we lost five in a row. Okay. And today we uh, we won our first one. We beat Toronto. Thank God. Congratulations, Brewies. Yeah. It was going to be a shit show. We lost five in a row. We fucking lost to San Jose, Anaheim, the Kings, then the Rangers, and then the Panthers, and the wheels were fucking coming off. And then, uh, of course, as always, Bergeron and Chara fucking step up, you know, for the, uh, I guess, the tying goal and then the go-ahead goal. And what's his face? Bolesky got the fucking empty netter. I missed the whole game because we were at brunch, and I was sitting there watching you, looking absolutely gorgeous, treating the wait staff like... <laughs> Is that why you didn't want to go today? 
No, I didn't. I didn't no, I didn't want to go because I thought your mom wanted to go to some place where everyone was going to go and everyone was going to show up with their Easter hats, and I was going to be standing out in the sun. With, it's going to be a forty-five minute wait. If you guys want to go down the street and get some drinks, and then maybe come back, we'll give you this vibrating <laughs> square. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But it didn't um, turn out to be that. No, it ended up being great. It ended up being great. Oh, by the way, I haven't even talked about it. Nia, I played the Terrace Theater last night in Long Beach. Yes. The place where uh, Richard Pryor did the greatest stand-up special of all time. I want to thank everyone who came out. I had such a great time, but for the first 10 minutes, I was literally freaking out, going like, that's where he told the white guy, you know, sit your ass down. You know, this is where he did My Monkeys Died. And I remember in the end when I waved goodnight, I remember how he finished his set, the woman having the orgasm, Mm -hmm. and the whole place goes nuts. And he didn't have to say goodnight. He just waved. Ah. I started to watch the special and I had to stop watching it because I knew it would fuck up my set. But like it is if you, it is the definition of a comic who's just in a zone. He walks out from the beginning to end. It gives me like fucking goosebumps when I watch that special to this day. He, he, he's the greatest. It's not even fucking close. And I got to basically stand and do stand up there. And I just can't believe it. I, I watched that special since I was a kid. And, and you walk in and it looks the exact same. Where you drive in is where he drove in with his wife when they filmed the special. And it all still looks the same. And as I was walking in, I was getting like the chills. And you just walk and, and it's like, there it is. This is this is it. This is the place. And, it, and at the end of the show, when I said goodnight, Dean Del Rey came out and outroed me. And the spotlight went on him. So it wasn't on me. And so it wasn't in my eyes anymore. I could just see the spotlight hitting the tops of everybody's heads. And that's the way I saw the theater, you know, because I didn't really show the crowd in that special. And um, it was just one of the coolest things ever. And then the night before, I worked at theater in Riverside, California, that they actually debuted Gone with the Wind. The first, you know, before they had the official premiere at Man's Chinese Theater, they wanted to make sure the sound was all right. So they just headed east and they... uh, they shot it. I don't know. They, they fucking whatever. They played the movie out there, and I got to stand on those stages. It was fucking tremendous. And I want to thank everybody who came out. Um, it was fucking amazing. It was That's fucking great. amazing. Yeah. Um, and lastly, before we get into the questions, is the uh, the Lincoln Continental. All right. I talked to this, you know, this guy who drove us. We got a driver to take us down to Long Beach because I knew I was going to have a couple of whiskeys after that. You know, I was trying to be responsible. So, um, you know, I, I was sitting there going like, you know, I like the Lincoln Continental. I hope they don't fuck it up. I hope they make it fuck with the Mercedes Benz, you know, like let's really make this a nice car. Like fuck with the seven series BMW. I want this thing to be a nice fucking car. And I was saying, it would be cool if they actually brought back the suicide doors. And the driver was going, yeah, they're doing that. The top of the line one's going to have suicide doors. And I went and I looked it up and here's a picture of it. Mm hmm. How sick is that fucking car? That's very cool. Uh, we're, I'm going to post this picture, and it's just the concept car. And as far as I know, they didn't fucking do it. Why wouldn't you do that? Look at that. Look how fucking <laughs> pure. That is the sickest fucking shit ever. <laughs> Nia, look at that car. Yeah, I see. No, it's cool. I'm looking at you. Hopefully you guys are just you're looking at the picture right now. They even have like the trunk comes up and no, slides forward, no, and then the bottom kicks out, and there's I wish your they fucking could make luggage. It so we can see it in real life. They can. Well, you know what you have to do is you have to buy the car, and oh. then you got to take it to one of these wizards out here and say, "You see that? I want you to do that." One of those gas monkey guys. T- tell them to fucking do that to the car. Wait, what's this one though? I saw on the bottom. This this is a a Lincoln. Yeah, this is with the LED lights. And in this one, the LED lights, like the, the the Lincoln Continental, their emblem, also lights up in LED lights. That's fucking sick. That's nice. 2017 Lincoln Continental to replace 2016 L- Lincoln MKS. Yeah. Huh. It, I'm nice. either going to get that or I'm going to get that Dodge Ram RT Sport. Like just the two-door, no extra cab, none of that. I just, I'm, I'm such a Ford guy, but I just fucking love the way the Dodge Ram Hemi f- truck looks. One or the other. Hmm. One or the other. But I'm going to get some. I'll probably get the old man car. That's me, right? <laughs> You're definitely an old man. I am. God damn it. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> I thought it was cool. I guess I'm not. All right. So here we go. Unless they fuck the car up. And then I'll be right back to square one. Um, Look at this fucking guy.
Like Wait a second. You are addicted to world star hip hop. Like you guy. watch these videos constantly. Dude, it's the funniest shit ever. It's the sickest fights. It's the funniest fucking videos. And then there's all this all this rap shit that I, I'm never gonna fucking I'm see that I, I'm too out of the loop. And I end up seeing like uh, who's the guy I like to Trinidad uh Yes, Bill just Trinidad, Trinidad, Trinidad James. Trinidad James, yes. A fucking that guy's a genius. <laughs> I don't know. He's about a fucking that. Ge- Yeah, he is. He's totally different. <laughs> you don't think he is? I enjoyed a couple of his songs, but oh, whatever. I wouldn't go that far. You didn't see the fucking video where they had the things in their eye? That looked cool as shit to they me. They did that in the fucking the opening to that movie Belly. This is not like a new concept. Look, everything's been done. You could do that to my act. Why, why are you being... Yeah, you're just treating everybody like a fucking waiter this week. I'm trying to give oh, somebody a see, shout out who got win. fucked out of a record deal. You know I what I mean? I'm too, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Only I get to criticize shit. I see that. All right. Let's get on to the... Uh, let's go to the... Uh, let's get to the questions here for this week. All right. Daredevil. Dear Billy Nunchucks. Uh, you know what nunchucks are? Yes, Bill. That was it right there. <laughs> That was it right there. You just asked me if I knew what nunchucks were. I just were. asked you. Yeah, I can't even read out loud. I'm not judging you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last year, someone recommended you to watch uh, Daredevil. I would like to reiterate that a year later, season two is the shit. Uh, the Punisher fucks people up the way he should, and you actually believe the love story. Tons of cool fight scenes. Watch it with the whiskey. Not sure if Neil would love it. But this one's this one's for you. All right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I've heard it's really good. Well, I let's let's watch, let's it, watch but... it. Let's watch it tonight. Okay, we'll watch it. You want to have a whiskey with me? Sure. A whiskey with old Frisky over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> s- <laughs> sorry. Skin infection. Oh, the question everybody has not been waiting for. Mm. All right, dear Bill, I was hanging out with this girl, and I think she gave me a quote skin infection. Oh no. Mm. I haven't been with anybody else. I confronted her about it, and she said she didn't have any symptoms. I am 100% sure I haven't been with anyone else, and I contracted it from her. She's acting like nothing happened, and I didn't say I got it from her, but it's still kind of weird. Should I take my chances and get back with her or move on? What kind of skin infection do you have? He means STD. He's just trying to I know. Oh, okay. Um, I was hanging out with this girl. I mean, if you were, if that was the only person that you had slept with in like the last six months and you didn't use protection and, uh, I mean, as long as you told her, just get treated. And I mean, that's up to you if you want to keep banging this girl or not, but, um, don't keep banging this girl. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if she, I mean, cause the thing is she could at least be like, all right, well, let me go get tested just in case. Yeah. And then you could both be tested for everything and get treated for everything. And yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Okay. And then go your separate ways. This is how this thing starts off. Yeah, it's not good. He obviously likes banging her. Otherwise, he wouldn't be asking this question. There must yeah. not be too many prospects on the horizon if this is what it's come down to. And then I'll, I'll go the obvious <laughs> one. She's really good at fucking because mm-hmm. she's done it a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of people. Lot maybe, of maybe, maybe, well, maybe she got on. Maybe she got unlucky. Maybe she just had the gift. I don't fucking know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I hope whatever you got use is curable. Use protection. Go to the doctor. Get treated. Use protection. Like, don't be an idiot. Stop raw dogging out here. Okay. New girl. <laughs> no, new car. Sorry. New car. <laughs> that was like a Freudian slip. Like, get a new yeah. girlfriend. Get the fuck out of that thing. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Ah, that's brutal. Makes you happy to be married. All right. New car, mm-hmm. dear Billy Blue Book. I'm in the market <laughs> for a new car like yourself. I want to get something used, something with character, but my girlfriend thinks I'm holding onto the past and I'm trying to be hip in my own way. She wants me to get a Passat. What? Do you know how much of a creepy sellout I'd have to be to drive a Passat? That your is not thoughts? a sexy car. Why would your girl want you to get a Passat? That's some lame. I would want because you to you know get what? a sexy They're... man car, not a fucking Passat. This... Wait, can you pull an image up of a Passat? But I also fucking drive an eight-year-old dented Prius. <laughs> I know, but you're... I mean, I'm mean, i a frugal son of a bitch. Yeah, it's, I think it's a little bit different. 
Why? Why is that different? Well, you didn't tell me to get the fucking thing. Do you know what it is? You. you know what it is out there? There's so many fucking men and women out there that that will derail your fucking dreams. Oh, okay? wait. I wonder if she wants him to get a car like a Passat because I feel like that's a reasonable, safe car because she's trying to get you to save up for a ring or an apartment or something. Yeah, look at that thing. That is not... Oh, my God. That's as that's soulless as my car. That's the boring-ass car I've ever seen in my fucking life. That is, that is so boring. Get yeah. a Prius, at least. It's like, what is that? A Passat? I don't okay. know what that is. Whatever. Um, that's horrible. And the fact that Germans made that, Germans usually fucking crush it. Well, then I'm sure it's very efficient. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that one alone. Um, but other than that, I'm not into it. I think the bigger thing here is what happens to a lot of people when they get into a relationship is, look, there's definitely going to be some compromises. But like when your heart's fucking racing and you want to fucking do something – or the person you're with, and you can see it like this is something they want. This is something they have a passion. This is something that's going to make them happy. For you to try to fucking talk them out of it, like why would you do that? She wants a ring, that's why, and she's trying to get him not to spend, have to spend money on an older car that needs repairs and needs this and that and the other when he could be saving for a ring. I guarantee fucking see it. That's what you're thinking. I absolutely think. so. Well, if he gets a used car, isn't that cheaper than going out and getting a new Passat? Uh, what what is it? I'm. What do you want? To, I want to get something used, something with character. Things I'm holding on to the past and trying to be hip in my own way. So, but does he mean What's wrong with having a little like bit of style? A classic car? He must be yeah. a classic that car. Yeah, that means, yeah, something like that. Yeah. She wants to get a Passat. Right. She wants him to get a nice, cost effective, moderate. You know what she like, is? We're going to have a family and a house someday. Okay. Car. That's what that's about. Read, oh. read in between the lines, fellas. Read in between the lines. Oh, I thought she was the dream catcher. You know? Dream catcher? Dream catcher. is like your dream. Hey, this is my dream. And then she catches it and she puts it in her pocket. Like a dream killer. Dream killer, right? Yeah. But you got to catch it first to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an ant. You can't kill it unless you You just decide it. that things are yeah. what you want them to be. That a dream catcher is really what a dream killer is. But you have to catch it first you catch before it first. you kill it. Catch it before you kill it. Okay, honey. I live in my own little world over here. <laughs> All right, Magma. Magma. Okay, dear Bill, have you heard? Have you heard about the lonesome loser? Have you heard of Magma? I just saw them in L.A. They definitely sound like some sort of fucking metal band here. I've never heard of them, but went with a friend of mine who works in post production. The drummer is sixty eight and unreal. All right, nice. I already love this band. He plays a combination of jazz and progressive style beats, tons of soul. The music is interesting and operatic. Ooh. He invited his he invented his own language and it's really out there. Please look some up and give your reaction on the podcast. Well, let me fucking do it really quickly. We're running out of time here. Let's see here. What do you think? You think you're gonna like it? Magma? I'm curious about it. I'm surprised that Dude, I went I went and I saw this crazy fucking band. Bobby Yo. Lee's Bobby Lee's brother's in it. And I went and I saw this crazy fucking band. Like, I don't, I, I got to the show late. I can't remember the name of the band, but they were fucking whole. Oh, yeah. Somebody tagged me in a picture you took with one of the band members. I had the best time. They had this one. You have to look them up so you can give them a shout out. Okay. I had the best fucking time. All I remember was their fucking, their closing song was, was like the guitar was like really like thrash, thrash, thrash. And the guy just was going like, no, 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 And it was, it was just so ridiculous. It was awesome and funny. And I was just going that you should put that on an album cover and then have all the lyrics like written out. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, they're French. Oh, they are? Magma, the weirdest band in the world. All right. Let's, let's see what we got here. All right, I'm already in. I kind of like it too. I would go see that. I that like reminds you totally me. Totally vibe out to this kind of stuff. You know, it reminds me of. I used to go see. Used to go see Oz Noy down in the village. Who? Oz Noy. Uh huh. O Z N O Y. Yeah, he used to always have like Will Lee would be down there, and Keith Carlock would sit in. Just had all these insane drummers. Um, look at dude, this look drummer. at that guy. And the drummer's the <laughs> shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I love it. They all look a little long in the tooth, actually. <laughs> Dude, these guys are all beasts. That guy, the bass player, looks like the cop that walked up to the guy in the fucking scooter. Yeah, all right? Oh, my God. I love these guys. I'm, I'm Uh-oh, in. Uh-oh, it's speeding up. Uh-oh. What's going to happen? 
Hang on. Oh, I can't leave it here. Here we go. Let me fast forward so you don't have to sit through all this. Dude, I would just... Uh, this is yeah. This is when it starts yeah. getting weird. It gets all fucking. Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm in. I'm but in. You know what? I feel like if there was, if we had our own version of the Andy Warhol's factory or something like that, like a big loft space downtown where we just had a bunch of our artist friends and assorted weirdos, we can have magma playing in the background, and it just would make a lot of sense and weird. Yeah, because you could drown out all those assholes that hang around with people <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm not an Andy Warhol fan I on, know you're on not. any you level. You like his art. Or you don't like his, like, persona. No, I respect the originality of it, but I also just feel like a lot of it was smoke and mirrors, and it was very, like, that hipster sort of... Oh, he's sort of the, like origi- the, the, the original of, like, that hipster shit, like, I'm going to paint yeah. a soup can. And, like, it's, it's some sort of comment on capitalism and everything, and it's just like, all right. But is, it, is it a really a, a deep comment on it? Because it's not moving me... I don't know. I mean, I like Andy Warhol. I like his stuff. I feel like that was a very cool time to be in New York City during that time. I feel like I would have loved to have been a part of that scene. But um, It just seemed yeah. to me like it was a bunch of nerds trying to be cool, pretending. Like, a lot of hipsters to me. I think there were, were a lot fucking... of misfits that found each other, and they created, like, their own little world, and they became cool because of that. That's what I think. Because right. there's a bunch of like you know what, what, transgendered what, 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 people and just like yeah, oh, and they're just automatically cool, and wh- right? They're no, just I'm automatically t- cool. Can you just listen to what I'm saying? <laughs> like, there's no asshole transgendered people. Can I explain to you <laughs> what it was? The bringing together of all these different kinds of people, and that was different in New York City. Uh, yep. It was like a whole birth of interesting like outsider perspectives. And giving them like a platform, and like you're a freak, and you're cool. Yeah, and, no, like, I absolutely weird. think. So then, like, the the uh, what is wrong? Why can't why if I have a different opinion, you gotta fucking get upset? No, it's not that you have a different opinion. It's that you literally didn't even let me finish my thought before you just hopped on that whole thing, and that well, just makes I you sound interrupt. dumb. I interrupt. It's what I do. <laughs> Fine. You're taking this way too seriously. Look, do I have any sort of artistic style? Look, look at me. <laughs> look like I'm in a Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm going you... to sit here and criticize fucking Andy Warhol? Who the fuck yeah. am I? <laughs> oh, yeah. I took an, an Elvis cover that somebody else already created, and then I, I painted red and blue stripes across Andy it. Andy Warhol could have very easily made that poster. That's the kind of stuff that he made. Actually, there was a poster of him and uh, Jean Michel Basquiat that was kind of like similar. What my in my tone. tour poster? Yeah, like the kind of like battle of them boxing and stuff. Like that poster could a hundred percent have been what Andy Warhol did if you were famous back in the day. That's all I'm saying. So you're saying he's not original? I'm saying the person that did that perhaps is not. What putting a head on something? <laughs> Was he the first guy? That, he's the first there's guy with Photoshop shit? There's a shit? whole style to that poster, which is really cool, by the way. And like that's it reminds me a little bit of what Warhol might have done. That's all I'm saying. All right. When's the well, last when, time well, you when, even went to a museum, though? Like, let's be honest. About I don't your... like them. <laughs> I, I really don't like it. Look, if it's, if it's a bunch of if it's old cars... If it's paintings, if it's old cars. If it's paintings, uh, cars. You know, there's a big debate actually in the art community: are automobiles works of art? Yes, and, and they of and course. they took a Ralph Lauren's car collection and they stuck it in one of those fucking stuck up museums there, MoMA or whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> Museum of Natural History. The the I don't think they put it in the museum. The of fucking the Zen Rendezvous on the. F- <laughs> Fifth Avenue, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> Every other fucking broad I dated in New York, that was always the first date. Like, they, oh, let's go to a museum. It's like, will you stop acting like you're smart? <laughs> stop doing this. Just because you're dumb doesn't stop mean trying, that to, trying to be smart. Oh, for fuck's sake. So let's just go out and get a drink and see if we can deal with each other. I got to go fucking <laughs> sit there and stand next to you in silence reading shit about dinosaur bones. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'll meet you there. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't like them. I don't like one of the worst museums I ever went to was when we went, we were in Vatican city and we should have gone to the right just to look at that overrated painting on the fucking ceiling. We went to the, I just want to, can we just pause? And I just, they know really what I'm talking about. They know talking about the Sistine chapel. And so 
fucking and that you're overrated criticizing the art that was in the vatican like this art that's like hundreds upon hundreds yeah, of years i'm telling you what right now like this amazing if i bought like, that building historical fucking art if i bought that building the, the sistine vatican. chapel i would turn that into a cigar room and i would let that smoke <laughs> go right up into that overrated dude they make it seem like it's fucking huge there's no way it took that long did, Bill, you went in there and you looked at it for like five seconds and then you were like ready to get a fucking panini. Bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to take it all I'm a fucking guy. You know what he was? He was like the original contractor. They said, hey, can you paint my ceiling? Uh, yeah, yeah. This will be easy. I'll have this done in like three fucking weeks. <laughs> fucking four years later. Yeah, uh, the fucking the green paint's on back order. He's got 20 other ceilings he's fucking working on. Um, all yeah, right. You can't tell me when you went through the whole Vatican thing and you watched every fucking Good vestiment money. that every goddamn pope wore. Like after a while, you're like, I get it. They all wore these ponchos with a cross on it. I was fascinated by it because I love religious art. Oh, OK. Hey, Cleo. What about sexual assault? What about it? The fucking 800 pound gorilla. Why didn't they have a little something about that in there? Um, yeah, because I kind of went. Art. Yeah, well, that would have ruined the. Uh, well, it was in art the way they hit all those pedophiles all those years. <laughs> That's an art form to be moving all those chess pieces around while still collecting the money and not paying taxes. What does that have to do with the art that we're talking about seeing at the Vatican? Well, if I was to talk about a certain somebody's sitcom right now, I think you would bring up some of his uh, offstage behavior. Are we talking about Cosby? No, we're talking about fucking slappy white. <laughs> Uh, the, the priests weren't uh, the ones that were painting the fucking Sistine Chapel bill. No, I'm, ta- I'm not talking about that. So, I'm talking about when we looked at every fucking fork and chalice mm-hmm. that Pope John Paul the fucking 58th. <laughs> when you go into the Sistine Chapel, which admittedly I thought was the Sixteen Chapel. Did you really? You don't remember that? We were staying in oh, line. Right. Remember I said, <laughs> you know what I would do because this line is so fucking long? If I lived here, I would open a bar across the street and I would call it the 17th Chapel. <laughs> and you're like, why would you call it that? I was like, you know, the 16th Chapel, the 17th Chapel. And you just looked at me and your eyes narrowed and you said, Bill, it's the Sistine Chapel. And I said, oh. <laughs> and that's my story about Rome. All righty. Oh, fuck all you guys. All right, 47 that- years old, ladies and gentlemen. See, well, yeah, I, I'm not into that shit. Okay. You know? Okay. See that? Look at you. You're an angel. You can That's- see through my stupidity. You don't have to be into it. I still love you. It's, you know, You're it still is, a good guy. It's still, you know. What? But the reality is that there, <laughs> there are certain things that are common knowledge. I really should have known that. I would think so, but I bet a lot of people think it's the 16th chapel. You know something? I don't, uh, <coughs> I don't like, I don't get embarrassed by shit like that. <laughs> you really don't. No, if I think, I, I would, yeah, yeah, I thought it was the 16th. I didn't know it was <laughs> the 16th. And then everybody, oh my God, it's the 16th. It's like, did is anything in there <laughs> from something that you created? <laughs> then shut up. What are you... <laughs> Oh, that was the Apollo 13 mission? Oh, really? Are you a fucking astronaut? <laughs> no. You're just sitting in this diner with me getting fucking eggs. Aren't you? And they're not the farmer's market ones either. Is All this right. why you don't like the, the museums? Do you feel like there's a pretension in people who like art and stuff like that? It's too much fucking shit. It's too much reading. It's and, too much reading. Oh, my God. And it just keeps going and going and going. And then there's people whispering. Oh my god, look at this up here. Have you seen this? Shh. <laughs> That's what happened to me in this in the Sistine Chapel. When we walked in there, I was just like, oh, wow, it's kind of small. And they went, shh. Oh, I wanted to put that guy's head right through the I fucking mean, well, stained glass we were, window. We were in a church, so it's like a holy place. So, you know, you had to keep it. Well, I would think they went on a certain level of noise to drown out the children screaming <laughs> in the basement. Oh, my God. They deserve it. Fuck them, pieces of shit. Um, we, can't, we can't end on that. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't the dog coming in here? I'm a little concerned. Oh, Cleo! Because she's... Oh, uh, the doors are closed. Oh, poor thing. She's right there, right? Baby? 
All right, that's the podcast for this week. I'll check in on you. Oh, she was sleeping. On Thursday. What's that? Oh, she was sleeping. Okay, cool. All right. She was just sleeping. Well, thank you for uh, hanging out on the podcast. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm glad you came by. I don't think those stories of people falling off shit would have been as funny. <laughs> I had somebody to bounce it off of. Oh, look who's here. Hi, Sleepy. The old gray bear. Yeah, our senior dog. I know. We just realized our dog's a senior now. She's eight. She's eight and a half years old. Starting to get a little bit of white in her face. Yeah. That made me sad and it made me happy. Yeah. You know, she had a rough first year and a half and she's just been fucking chilling ever since. Haven't you, Cleo? She looks great, though. And she's still adorable. She's still our little baby, no matter what. Well, at least she ought to pay rent at this point. (laughs) All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys on Thursday. And once again, seriously, man, thank you to everybody that came out this weekend. uh, For those (laughs) shits that are scratching. The shows um, at Riverside and the Terrace Theater. And I want to thank Dean Del Rey for crushing it both nights. And... um, that's it. I got Canada coming up later on this week. I'm going to be in Ontario. I don't even know where. Ottawa and a bunch of places. Um, I think Windsor. I have no idea. They're all on my website. Um, I'm bringing. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I better hit the fucking treadmill because I'm bringing fucking the pride of New Jersey, Paul Verzi, and the, the godfather of the Rose Bowl tailgate, Joe Bartnick himself. He's, uh, he's going to be coming along, too. And... Uh, It's going to be a killer fucking show. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.